Well, thank you for joining us on a primary night that is unlike any we've ever seen, and it means we still do not know who won the big races here in Western New York. Good evening. I'm Mary Alice Demler. Scott is off tonight. We are waiting because the coronavirus pandemic caused a lot more people than usual to cast absentee ballots, and some of them have not even come in yet. So the big focus out here is on the two races to replace Chris Collins, who admitted to insider trading and resigned his congressional seat earlier this year. Now, first, we have State Senator Chris Jacobs and former Grand Island Town Supervisor Nate McMurray running to fill out the last few months of Collins's term. Jacobs holds the lead there, but with a lot of ballots again left to count. And then there's the Republican primary to face McMurray in November for a full term, with Jacobs facing off with former Darien Town Justice Beth Parlato and Erie County Clerk Stefan Mahailu, who just released a statement calling Jacobs the winner. Now, Jacobs does lead there, but again, it's very early considering all those absentee ballots, and we are not declaring a winner yet. Well, we have team coverage on this unprecedented primary night with Steve Brown and Ron Plants out live, but we're going to start with Michael Wooten taking a look at the numbers that we've already seen come in tonight. Michael? And Mary Alice, we have new numbers in just a minute in that Republican primary, um, but Chris Jacobs doing very well in it. This is the top line number that you showed a moment ago um, for the uh, election that's happening in person. This doesn't include any of the absentee ballots. So you've got to keep that in mind as we go through this. But Republican Chris Jacobs with just a massive lead there. We kind of expected that was going to happen uh, more than 11,000, almost 12,000 votes. Um, you probably want to know about where you live, right? So we'll start in Erie County. There the margin pretty close, actually the uh, exactly the same as the grand total there. Chris Jacobs up 70 to 28, almost the same in Niagara County, big margin there. Orleans County County gets the prize tonight, 100% uh, reporting already, so kudos to them. Uh, there, Chris Jacobs with almost 8 out of 10 votes when you factor in the early voting and the voting that happened today. Uh, Genesee County, nothing yet from there. And then finally, Wyoming County, also 0% reporting right now. So that brings us to the other big race. Remember, that is who will represent the 27th district starting in just the next few weeks until the end of this year. But you also have this primary going on, and that is where I think these numbers are maybe a bit surprising. Chris Jacobs really running away with it uh, with quite a bit of the vote now in almost 20,000 votes. The other two just about 6,500 combined. Again, we'll quickly go county by county in Erie County. Chris Jacobs about 57% of the vote. Stefan Mahailu with a quarter. Beth Parlato with just under 20% there in Niagara County. Jacobs with just another huge margin. You can see 77% of the vote. Orleans County again 100% reporting 72% for Jacobs. Uh, Genesee County still waiting on some results there, but we did just get some numbers in for Wyoming County in this primary and there Chris Jacobs again uh, doing pretty well. So a lot of absentee ballots to count, but it is hard to imagine right now with Chris Jacobs running up just massive margins uh, today and also in the early vote. I think that's why you have Stefan Mahailu coming out and saying he's the winner, but a lot of votes left to count. With that said, let's turn it over to my colleague Steve Brown, who is at the Board of Elections tonight and Steve uh, a little quieter there than I think we're used to seeing on an election night. Yeah, it's quiet, but uh, you got an awful lot of tired folks here, too. I will tell you that I've been told that the folks here at the Erie County Board of Elections Office have been working nonstop since Memorial Day or beyond that. So it's weeks of consecutive days of working, getting ready for today and the complicated election that they faced going into today now that the day is over. And it's complicated because of all of those absentees. As voting wound down tonight and the clock struck nine, the polls closed and a new huge job lay ahead. We have a room full of ballots now. Easily over 100,000 absentee ballots now have to be opened, checked and counted at the Erie County Board of Elections. None of this immense project will happen right away. And if you're wondering about security for these absentee votes, our uh, absentee ballots go in our double locked uh, ballot room where there's a key for the Republicans and a key for the Democrats and, and there's always a bipartisan team in there working on things. State law requires absentees in local and state races remain uncounted until seven days after election day. For federal races, it's 13 days. The wait to see what ballots come in in the mail. 
The campaigns are aware of the timetable. They know what the schedule is. Um, in the past, sometimes candidates have come in and looked through every single absentee that pertains to their elections. That's probably not going to be possible this time due to the sheer volume we have. The most famous ballot count in U.S. history was Florida's presidential recount in 2000. Packed rooms, lots of people scouring ballots. No plan for that here in the age of COVID. Space and headcount will be limited, and Zellner says once the counting begins, election staff will be asked to keep things chugging along. We're going to move as quickly as possible. I mean, we want we need to certify the election so we can get the ballot together so we can certify winners for the fall. Now, the total number of absentees that have come in up to and through today is greater than 131,000, and all of those have yet to be counted. Jeremy Zellner, the Democratic Commissioner for the Erie County Board of Elections, says this is a good dress rehearsal for the election coming up this fall. He suspects there will be another large number of absentees, and he factors in a presidential race as one of the big reasons why. Well, that's it from here, but the big race tonight obviously is in New York 27. My colleague Ron Plants is covering that race over in Blaisdell. Ron? Well, Steve, yeah, actually, we're here at uh, Chris Jacobs post-election headquarters here in Blaisdell, and we want to point out that we found a rather confident Chris Jacobs at this point. In fact, just a little while ago, we actually saw him out there on the porch uh, taking some calls. Perhaps he's hearing some of these early results coming in, especially with the primary election. Now, the Republican state senator is, of course, again, the focus here in this election today because, again, he was taking part in that special election for the 27th District Congressional seat, as well as the Republican primary against the two other candidates. So, again, this is a very unique situation and we asked the senator about what it was like to be in that situation here's what he had to say it was a challenge uh, we tried our best to educate the voters uh, when I was at polling places today I felt people generally understood uh, you know we, we tried to monitor the polling places there was some confusion at the polling locations a few instances not pervasive or anything uh, but I, I felt good I, I think the election commissioners did a great job they were put under a lot of stress here not just for this election, but uh, having to notify every voter of their right to uh, absentee ballot and so forth. It was a lot of, it was a very significant mandate on them. I think they did well. And there's going to be a lot more work now cut out for them over the next two weeks uh, to, to process those absentee ballots. But uh, I think we've educated the voters, and I feel very, uh, very good about our chances here. Uh, Jacobs was also asked about a teleconference call he had with President Trump. And obviously that lifted his spirits. We knew that President Trump had already endorsed him. But again, apparently he was on a direct conference call. And uh, again, the president spoke directly to him and about the situation and about the campaign. And I'm sure that buoyed his spirits going into today. And obviously, I guess he was hoping that that would also buoy the spirits of the Republican faithful. Again, as everybody's been pointing out, we'll have to see how those absentee ballots come in. Uh, but again, a very confident Chris Jacobs here this evening in Blaisdell. Reporting live from Blaisdell, I'm Ron Plants, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Ron. And we did get to speak with Nate McMurray just a short time ago, and we asked him how the pandemic impacted his campaign. Well, it hurt us because we couldn't campaign. We can't, we didn't have the money to buy literally millions of dollars worth of commercials. Look at how much money the other side spent compared to us. Uh, we are a grassroots campaign, so we, we're used to going to gymnasiums and the libraries and meeting people, and we couldn't do that, and it was a hard for us. That's why we focused on making sure people voted from home, and that was a key strategy for us. I'm feeling confident. I mean, we did everything we needed to do. We ran this campaign the right way, and I'm excited. I'm, I think we're going to fight to make sure every single vote is, is counted. And we are joined tonight by two on your side, political analyst, Democrat Bruce Fisher and Republican Carl Calabrese. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. I want to focus first on the 27th special election. Uh, Carl, we just heard uh, from uh, Chris Jacobs. He seems very confident. Uh, what do you make of these early numbers with Jacobs in the lead? Well, based on the machine vote, he should be confident. And, you know, in the past, Mary Alice, the absentee ballots and military ballots that came in usually track the machine vote pretty closely, but we've never had such a huge volume of absentee ballots. So I think political pros on both sides of the aisle are going to be looking at that 
those absentee ballots and see if that old rule still applies that absentees track machine closely. Uh, if they do, uh, Chris Jacobs will win very, very comfortably in this district. And Bruce, uh, we just heard Nate McMurray talk about how his campaign uh, was really impacted by the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, do you feel that was really a, a valid explanation, you could say, for uh, the fact that Jacobs really ran away with things and McMurray, again, really didn't have the cash uh, to put up much of a fight? Well, that and the fact that the district is two to one Republican, historically Republican, consistently Republican, and was a, a very, very steep uh, hill for uh, Nate McMurray to climb again. Look, uh, Chris Collins uh, was uh, damaged goods. Uh, Chris Jacobs doesn't have that set of baggage that Collins carried. So it's going to be very difficult for uh, uh, Nate McMurray. To Carl's point about the absentee ballots, uh, tracking uh, what the normal uh, uh, machine uh, uh, votes are, that's absolutely true. It's proved again over and over again in the school board elections recently where there was massive turnout, but the votes came in the way they always come in. So that's what we expect in this district. Overall, nationally though, it's gonna be very, very different. There's a surge of, of enthusiasm among de Democrats and not so much enthusiasm among Republicans. Let's quickly talk about Jacob's two GOP challengers. Um, it's showing that Parlato, with the exception of Erie County, came in second to Jacobs. Carl, what's your feeling on that? Was that what you were expecting to see? Uh, yeah, she ran a very a tough campaign. I mean, she she had sharp elbows on the boards. I'll tell you, I think she surprised a lot of people. She raised a lot of money. Uh, she's probably disappointed tonight with the with the numbers uh, in terms of the money she spent and, and the shots she took. But uh, uh, again, Chris Jacobs ran a good campaign. He stayed on message. He never came unnerved under some very, very tough attacks. And uh, to his credit, as I say, he uh, had a campaign plan. He worked it and it shows tonight in the results. And uh, as far as a preview of the challenge that's yet to come for November, Bruce, what are you expecting? Is this thing going to get ugly? Uh, I think the question really is, is Beth Parlato going to stick around? Because the last time a Democrat won this seat, it was because there was a third party candidate in there. And um, uh, if that happens again, uh, uh, Nate McMurray might have a shot. But look, who knows what it's going to look like if if the Republicans stay as focused as they were today, uh, I would expect that this district would stay Republican. But, you know, this district probably isn't going to last very long because reapportionment is just around the corner. All right. Well, gentlemen, we appreciate your insight and we look forward to November. I'm sure we're going to hear from you uh, a lot more before then. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Thank you. Good night. Bye.